Hey everyone, Marcello here from GameCube Galaxy, and today I'm going to be covering both the Blade GC and Battler GC controllers released by Retro Fighters. These controllers are designed to be alternatives to the Sublime Wavebird controller for the GameCube, while also being accessible on the Wii, Wii U, Switch, PC, and possibly other devices. Now, I do need to state that while I did pre-order the Blade GC controller back in October of 2021 when it was announced, Retro Fighters did send me the Battler GC controllers as review units. However, everything I will be stating in this review is my full, honest, unbiased opinion. With that being said, let's dive into these two controllers. The Battler GC and Blade GC controllers both come in indigo, black, and orange colors, which match the console variants for the GameCube. So first off, what does each package contain? Upon opening up either box, you will receive a controller, obviously, alongside a USB-C charging cable, a 2.4 GHz wireless receiver for the GameCube controller port, and a USB dongle for use on the Switch, PC, and other devices that I will mention later. Immediately, the controller feels incredibly light, yet solid. The analog sticks both feel great and responsive, and have the octagonal cutouts for that precision the GameCube controller is known for. All the buttons feel great, and while there is a bit more travel to them compared to the original controllers, it feels very tactile and great overall. The triggers also feel more in line with the DualShock 4's L2 and R2 triggers, providing a very smooth travel when pressing them down. However, if you're looking for that exact feeling of the GameCube's triggers, these do not replicate that feel since there is no click awaiting at the bottom of that trigger press. There is a USB-C charging port and sync button on the top of the controller, and syncing to either the GameCube port dongle or USB dongle is honestly as easy as it gets. Press the sync button and the controller pairs immediately. There are four LED lights under the controller to show which player you are as well. Additionally, there are capture, home, plus and minus buttons for use with the switch here, as well as a turbo button. The turbo functionality is activated simply holding any of the buttons down that you want turbo enabled for, and then pressing the T button, which does come in handy for games like ESPN International Winter Sports 2002 or Mortal Kombat Deadly Alliance's Test Your Might minigame. When playing GameCube games, the home button will act as the start button. So, what are the differences between the Blade GC and Battler GC controllers? Honestly, just the position of where the analog stick and D-pad are. If you're more of a PlayStation fan in terms of a controller, the Blade GC will feel right at home for you. If you still love the style of the GameCube controller's analog stick and D-pad placement, then the Battler GC is the one for you. Personally, I feel that both complement each other nicely. When it comes to playing side-scrollers, fighting games, or even games on the Game Boy Player, the Blade GC will definitely be my pick thanks to the D-pad placement being on the upper left quadrant. For everything else though, the Battler GC will be my main go-to. I will say, the battery life states that it lasts over 10 hours, and it surely has been excellent in this regard. Now, as far as testing out the consoles with these controllers, I naturally dove into the GameCube first. Shocker, right? Simply insert the GameCube wireless receiver into the controller port, press that sync button, and boom, already connected. You can plug multiple of these wireless receivers in, and the controllers will sync up appropriately and respond without frequency issue. Although, it is worth noting that if you have a router with a 2.4 GHz signal nearby, like in the same room, that will affect the frequency from the controller and provide inconsistent as well as unresponsive moments of gameplay, so bear that in mind. Now, I did test out a variety of games on the GameCube, like Resident Evil 4, Metal Gear Solid The Twin Snakes, SSX3, Mortal Kombat Deadly Alliance, and Super Mario Sunshine, just to name a select few. I have to say, playing with these controllers felt very natural. Controls were responding with zero lag, as far as I could see, and just worked so well. However, there is something I've noticed felt a little bit off, which were the L and R triggers, in Metal Gear Solid The Twin Snakes, if you wanted to instantly equip or unequip an item or weapon, I had to slowly push down the trigger for that to happen, instead of quick tapping it. This was the only instance that felt slightly different from the original GameCube controller. So after this, I decided let me dive into Super Mario Sunshine, which heavily uses the pressure sensitive triggers, and alas, the trigger sensitivity functionality works flawlessly here for my tests. 
I did notice that the controller's rumble feature though is fairly weak. For instance, using the Chicago typewriter in Resident Evil 4, you will feel the constant rumble from the firing going on within the original GameCube controller. On this controller, I barely felt anything at all. It's not immersion breaking by any means, especially since the Wavebird had no rumble motors in that controller either, but I was hoping that this would have had a slightly stronger rumble built into it. Outside of these minor aspects though, the controller itself still works incredibly well. Now, moving on to the Wii, as long as you have a backward compatible model Wii, which has the GameCube controller ports on top, you can simply plug the GameCube wireless receiver in there and it will work just like it does on the GameCube console itself. All GameCube games work as expected, and furthermore, you can now play all those Wii games that actually support the GameCube controller natively, like Mortal Kombat Armageddon, TMNT Smash Up, Need for Speed Undercover, and of course, Super Smash Bros. Brawl, just to name a few. There are actually quite a bit of Wii games that have GameCube controller support natively. Now, if you want to play on the Wii U, you will need the Wii U GameCube adapter for this to work. It is worth noting that you cannot plug in the USB adapter the controller comes with for it to work on either the Wii or the Wii U, even despite the fact that it syncs up and the controller is being recognized, I will say, nothing responds. Use is quite limited on the Wii U, to be honest. It works as expected with Super Smash Bros for the Wii U, but if you go into Wii mode and play a game that actually supports the GameCube controller here, the controller won't read despite the adapter picking up the controller's frequency. Now, if you do have the homebrew channel with Nintendo installed, you can use the adapter here to play GameCube games with this controller. So if you're getting this as a Wii U controller, your mileage may vary quite a bit here. As for the Switch, here is where we get to use that USB adapter on the console dock, sync it up quick, and boom, up and ready for use. Playing Switch games with these controllers feels great for the most part, but I do say for the most part because certain games don't work well with the layout, like the Ninja Gaiden Master Collection, for example. Otherwise, yeah, this works fantastic. Of course, games like Super Smash Bros. Ultimate and Mario Kart 8 Deluxe will make this controller a crowd favorite. However, you also cannot wake your Switch from sleep mode with this controller. For fun, I decided to plug the USB receiver into my PlayStation 3 and see if it works on there. And unfortunately, no dice. Instead, you can always get the Defender controller from Retro Fighters for that console, as well as the PS1 and PS2. You guys have to look up the lineup of the Retro Fighters controllers. They are phenomenal. However, the device that I was really stoked to see it works for is the Polymega. Easily one of my favorite devices to play my retro gaming library on, playing my library of games from the Sega Saturn, the PS1, and Sega CD, as well as the N64 soon, it was wild playing something like Sega Rally with a GameCube-style controller. So, overall, are these controllers worth the $44.99 price tag? Yes, absolutely. Despite some minor gripes, Retro Fighters has once again proven to be the king of modern controllers for retro consoles. In a time where the retro gaming market is hotter than it's ever been, it can be a bit more challenging coming across original GameCube controllers that are actually in great condition and reasonably priced. If you're looking for a new wireless controller on the GameCube, Wii, Wii U, Switch, PC for Dolphin use, or even something like the Polymega, then both the Battler GC and Blade GC controllers will not disappoint. I want to thank Retro Fighters again for sending me a review unit for the Battler GC controller. And if you're interested in these controllers, I've teamed up with Retro Fighters to provide a 10% off coupon code if you order directly from their site. Simply put in GCG in the coupon code box and shave a few bucks off. If you guys have any questions in regards to these controllers, please feel free to ask in the comments down below and I will get back to you as best as possible. I hope you all enjoyed and I will catch you all in the next episode. Thank you.